Uh, with me is Joe Rousseau, and I felt the, the need to bring him with me. Uh, first and foremost, since it was my first time to hold my hand, uh, but, but in reality, um, it's important to showcase our leaders and the work that they're doing. Um, and so I want to take this opportunity to public, publicly thank him as well as the rest of our team. I just get to be the opportunity to, to, to work with them on the team. Um, but I want to thank our Indian Education Team Counselor, Susan, Susan Townsend, our Native American Student Advocates, Chris Ross, Destiny Spurlock, and Robert Perales, and then our Native American Reading Interventionist, Taryn Abriesk. And uh, Taryn is at four schools, our, our most highest need schools, um, and that is uh, Belmont, Clinton, Elliott, and Everett. Um, and then, of course, Joe Rousseau. Um, in my first year of this position, I've always been told when you go into a new position to listen and learn. And I promise I've been doing a ton of listening and a ton of learning. Um, but one of the first action steps that I did when I uh, was able to move into this position was to bring Joe into our, our leadership team. Um, and you're about to realize why. He is extremely creative, and the strategies that he's going to share with you today um, that are impacting our students are, are are huge and so um, that's why I, I feel it's important that he, he be here with me today. Throughout our presentation you're going to see an American Indian youth um, symbol on the bottom and Joe will uh, explain that in a little bit. You're also going to interchangeably hear us use the words Native American and American Indian. Um, for the purpose of this presentation we are talking about the same group of students. Um, so when we think about our Title VI grant, um, this is our Title VI Indian Education Grant. This is our most sustainable grant that we have in Lincoln Public Schools. Um, it is the core of Lincoln Public Schools in the education program for our American Indian students. We've had it for 20 plus years. Uh, it funds our, uh, our American Indian Advocates. Currently, we fund two out of this grant and then one out of our demo grant. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit, the importance of that, because we use our demo grants along with our Title VI Indian Education Grant to coincide together to be able to offer some of these cultural opportunities and some of these other positions. So, for example, we fund two um, American Indian Advocates out of this grant and one out of the demo grant to be able to have three. Uh, also, our Eagle Feather Project and cultural academic um, supports. The purpose of this grant is, is to support LPS efforts in creating and executing educational programs and culturally relevant activities to empower every American Indian student to achieve their highest academic potential. And so when we look at our funding for this year, um, our American Indian students are enrolled in all our schools across the district, representing 80 unique tribal communities as designated by the parent. So our estimated money for this next year for 2024-2025 is going to be $191,755,000. Um, and that is based on a total of 713 students with ED506 forms. We have to have those forms on file. Um, that is a decrease of about $13,635 from last year. Um, now I am a glass full type of person and so last year we were budgeted estimated at about 198 and actually received 205,000 so I'm really hoping that that amount actually increases regardless we are prepared and have made decisions on where that money how we're going to be able to use our demo grant to cover some of those things all of the decisions that we make with our with our budget we do um, with uh, from uh, with working in collaboration with our NAC committee uh, committee so that's our Native American advisor advisory committee um, and so we met with them yesterday to go over this um, and talk about the, the budget with them. Before I turn it over to Joe to go over the strategies and the work that we're doing I just wanted to bring your attention the demonstration grant. So Linda was here in October of 2022 to talk about this grant. Um, this is a five-year grant and, and the big pieces to take from this is that it is shared with our Title VI grant that we're presenting on today. Like I said, a lot of the funding that we use from the Title VI grant, we match with the demo grant in order to run a lot of the strategies that Joe will present about. Uh, the other big piece is that last one. Since being awarded the demonstration grant in 2018, we continue to, uh, with our increasing staff, we continue to increase those student ED506 forms. We're getting creative. Taryn, you all have a handout that Joe's going to talk to you about. We continue to find ways to, to, to get our families. So even though I told you that our number was based off of 713 students, as of April 1st, we actually had 726 students that we had forms for. So our team is continuing to get out there on the ground and continuing to work to continue to identify our, our students and our families so that we have the supports um, that they need. So without further, further ado, I'm going to let Joe talk about our goals and some of the work that we're doing. Which is it? All yep. right. Thank you. 
Hello, uh, my name is <clears throat> Joe Russo, and uh, I am a citizen of the uh, Lakota Nation. Uh, my children are citizens of the Lakota Nation and the Cherokee Nation. And we, how can I go back? There we go. We uh, feel it's important to uh, share uh, where we are from and uh, our ancestors when we introduce ourselves to others just so that uh, we can build those relationships uh, with those that we uh, work with. And here we have our goals within Indian education. And it's very difficult to separate certain goals with the, the title grant and the other goals with the demo grant. All of our efforts are uh, collective towards all four of these goals. The academic goals, uh, the social emotional health and well-being of our student goals, our cultural supports and our college and career readiness. Uh, in thinking of our academics, what comes to my mind uh, initially is the work we've been doing this year with the new CKLA Elementary English Language Arts Curriculum, uh, working on uh, ensuring our representation is uh, respectful and appropriate, as well as making ourselves available to our elementary educators to uh, we've been asked to present at certain schools to help uh, uh, improve, not improve, but enhance the uh, curriculum that our students are experiencing in our elementary classrooms. Um, we also fund tutors. Uh, we also provide summer staff development for our teachers. And Morningstar Counseling provides two sessions of staff development throughout the year for our social workers and counselors, and we've actually opened it up to uh, teachers that are interested in that, uh, in learning about uh, the supports from Morningstar Counseling. Our social emotional health supports uh, to meet those goals include, well, you know, we have our three advocates and we have Susan Townsend, which is our full-time counselor uh, funded through our grant. We have success coaches in every secondary school who teach or work within the school buildings, and so they're available on a daily basis for our students and families and other staff within our schools to access, to uh, help and support our students. Uh, we contract with Morningstar Counseling, uh, Dr. Warrior, uh, she is a citizen of the Ponca Nation, and she is the owner of Morningstar Counseling. So that is a, an outstanding uh, support for our students. And uh, many other states are actually reaching out to Dr. Warrior for her support. Our cultural supports are numerous. Everything we do is embedded within uh, um, our understanding and uh, our perspective. We, uh, when we, we work with uh, community partners uh, on Fridays, I meet at the uh, Ponca Health Center with uh, not only the Ponca, members of the Ponca Nation there, but also uh, Steve Larvey, the executive director of the Indian Center so that we can uh, communicate well concerning the supports for our students in our community. Uh, we have, as I mentioned before, all of our secondary clubs occurring in our middle schools and our high schools to provide those indigenous spaces for our students so that they can celebrate their brilliance with each other. Uh, we've had uh, Mike Wolf and Steve Larvey, uh, individuals, respected individuals from our community, visit many of our schools, visit our clubs, and share their understanding with our students. Um, you know, Sue Casada uh, is working very closely with us, and we are uh, just super grateful to have Sue uh, at Standing Bear High School as the principal there. Um, for instance, on the 19th, she has contracted with an individual to uh, present to her students there 
uh, seventh period and so I'm scrambling finding some transportation so that we can gather students from four different middle schools and have them attend the presentation as well. We also have students attending the Nebraska Native Youth Gathering on the 17th of April. Uh, we are creating a gathering of Native Americans. Uh, the Nebraska Native Youth Gathering this year is going to be held at Winnebago Public Schools, by the way. Uh, we, th that's for our high school students. Um, the, we have a gathering of Native Americans, which we uh, collaborate with the Indian Center, and that's occurring August 5th, 6th, and 7th, and that is for our middle school and high school in indigenous students. Uh, our family reads, we have four family reads events. We've got one coming up this Thursday, our final one. And we focus on ensuring that the books we read at our family reads and provide to our students are, are authored by native authors and include indigenous language within those books. We also, for our elementary students, we have served eight schools this year with an after school CLC club called Turtle Island. And then the fourth goal there, college and career readiness. Um, you know, when we go and present to our elementary schools to support our teachers with the CKLA language arts curriculum, we also showcase uh, present day contemporary examples of American Indian individuals. And one of the individuals we showcase is Dr. Warrior. And we also show actual pictures of our students attending our college visits so that our elementary students can see that we are still here and there are over 1,200 of us attending Lincoln Public Schools. We um, have college coaches which have, which are college students, American Indian college students that also participate in the Unite Student Group at the University of Nebraska. Uh, we have two of those individuals, one of them serving SCO Middle School and one of them serving uh, Color Middle School and they visit every other week a group of our students at those schools to share the reality that if college is something you would like to do it is something you can absolutely do. So that is we call those individuals a college coach. Uh, we provide tuition uh, support for our students that are attending the Career Academy and uh, that is the end of my bullets that I've scribbled on this page here. So let me move forwards, please. <laughs> Thank you. So here is our icon. And you can see that we have the turtle that ha was, has been present uh, as a uh, symbol of American Indian education. Uh, it's fitting that the turtle is a symbol there because it is, it reminds us of Turtle Island, this land where we um, have existed, where these native nations has existed since time immemorial. Uh, you know, it's, it's the land where we come from and it's the land where we will return. And so I felt to help others understand the symbol of the turtle, we should add some values. And those values should guide every decision we make as we meet and work towards meeting those goals. And any support that we put in place should fit within these values. We have four values from Dr. Martin Brokenleg uh, and his Circle of Courage uh, research. Dr. Martin Loken Brokenleg is a Lakota citizen. And he informs us of belonging, mastery, independence, and generosity. Nothing begins without belonging. And in our schools, it's where our students uh, need to feel like they belong before they, they can learn, as we all know. And once they learn, they become masterful. And once they receive that mastery, they gain their independence. And then ultimately, they can give back with the generosity. To me, that reminds me of our uh, MTSSA, academic multi-tiered systems of supports. And then we have the four R's. The four R's are the four pillars of the Anishinaabeg Nation. And they have provided this gift for us 
the four R's, respect, reciprocity, relationship, relationship, and responsibility. And so it's as if all eight of these terms kind of mean one thing anymore as I've spent a lot of time with them. And again, those are the values that guide our work. Because as we know, children are sacred and I'm privileged to spend any time with them that I can. And it's uh, very humbling to have served our students for over 22 years. So speaking of Taryn Aberesk, our reading interventionist, she created this graphic here. This graphic, I feel, is the reason we've had a recent increase in our ED-506 forms from families. Families, uh, she just has a way of communicating with our families so that they can understand all that our program has to offer them. I understand that some families out there want nothing to do with the federal government. That makes sense to me. But those that do now have a better opportunity to understand all that is offered to their students once they complete an ED-506 form. She has it nicely broken down into elementary supports, middle school supports, high school supports, as well as supports at the top there for all students. So here are some pictures uh, of our American Indian students that attend Lincoln Public Schools from the over 80 native nations that share geography with the young nation called the United States. So at the top left there, those are kindergarten students. Robert Perales, who is one of our American Indian education advocates and I went there and that was actually our first presentation that we were asked to do to help supplement this, the new CKLA language arts curriculum. Uh, and so we have, um, uh, my father uh, provided our program with, um, a, to talk with a buffalo skull and so that's one of the items that we bring there and then the horns come off and a couple bones over the bridge of the nose come off and then we can actually just pass them around and, and then we have sage. But the presentation that we show our students, our kindergarten students, is filled with pictures exactly that you see on this slide present day pictures of us because, again, we are still here. Down there at the bottom left, that is a picture from our middle school conference this year, uh, which occurred uh, in November at East Campus. And there is a moccasin game that Oscar Earth, uh, Oscar Earth is a citizen of the Winnebago na Nation. Oscar Earth was teaching our students the traditional uh, moccasin game there. At the top right, that is a picture from last year from our summer fun camp. One of the benefits of having an ED-506 on file is you have an opportunity to uh, enroll your elementary students in a uh, summer fun camp. And it is a week-long afternoon camp, and it happens essentially the last two years. It's went on the last week of June and we visit five different spots in Lincoln. This year we're gonna start off by visiting the Luminarium in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, and then we, on Friday we, we, we uh, celebrate, we, we cook some hamburgers and hot dogs, and we're at Holmes Lake, and we actually have the Game and Parks trailer with the, um, all the fishing rods and tackle, and so we, we go fishing, and then the younger, younger kids, there's playground equipment out there, and it's a, it's a great opportunity. But ultimately, the goal is the bottom right there. The, our, act, the, hold up, there's the middle picture there, isn't there? That is a picture of one of our uh, college visits last year to Haskell Indian Nations University in Lawrence, Kansas. And then ultimately, it all leads to the bottom right there. Better educational outcomes for our students. And those are our graduates last year as they posed for a picture during our, after the, uh, our eagle feather ceremony. And so here is this slide of the next slide is some information, some data for us. And you can see that we have work to do. There's plenty of work to do there. 
Uh, the all students graduate at an 84% rate. Uh, American Indian Alaska Native, those individuals that select that on our census, graduate at a 65% rate. However, students that have an ED506 form, they graduate at a 67% rate. Not good enough, but maybe it suggests that the efforts that we have in place are making a difference for those students that with families that choose to complete an ED-506 form. More work to do right here. If we're not at school, how can we learn? If we're at school, we'll learn. And if we're learning, we're gonna perform better on the classwork and the standardized tests. And if we're doing that, we're gonna graduate on time at higher rates. You can see here that all students uh, are attending school, 91.7%, I believe. And uh, our students that have completed an ED-506 form are outpacing the uh, American Indian Alaska Native, all American Indian Alaska Native uh, students or families that have selected that box. Now please know that not every American Indian Alaska Native individual with, with that box checked on the, census, on the census is eligible to complete an ED-506 form. It is appropriate for individuals from South America and Central America to check that box. But only those individuals whose Native nations share geography with the young nation called the United States are eligible to uh, complete an ED-506 form. And for reasons I don't really understand, neither are Pacific Islander individuals. Indigenous individuals from Hawaii, for instance, are ineligible to complete an ED-506 form. However, all students that attend LPS can participate in our Indian education activities, all students. And finally, you have the infographic that was created this year. Um, Dr. Gosman has encouraged us to create this infographic and also he has asked uh, Steve Larvey, the executive director of the Indian Center and other uh, community partners to uh, help LPS ensure that our curriculum is appropriate, relevant and uh, uh, and real, <laughs> to, for lack of a better word there. Um, you can see on the back side on the right, it says Native American Studies. Uh, that is a high school course that we are working hard on offering in every high school. Um, but as always, we need students to enroll in that to justify uh, uh, having a t space, you know, the cost, I guess, for, for again, a lack of a better word. But uh, we are working very hard and I am very, very um, excited and I feel very fortunate to work for a school district that puts this much effort and energy and responsibility onto a population essentially the smallest population of students that attend Lincoln Public Schools. I think that speaks volumes towards our de dedication for indigenous self-determination and sovereignty. Thank you. So now you know why Joe will be here every year moving forward to help with this presentation. Um, we wanted to end with just a couple of future plans. One of the things that Joe and I talked about when we were doing this, when we were setting up this presentation was, do we put in some of that data, do we not? The reality is, is that we're, we need to be transparent in the work that we're doing. Um, and for example, that data is fine to look at, but I really want to dive in and we talked with our NAC committee yesterday and we said, how can we really find the data that's going to show the work that we're doing as a team in the district? Um, Taryn can tell you right off the hand, I have second grader A, B, and C who has passed the, the reading demonstration test for the first time um, since I've been working with them. But we've got to be able to produce that. 
So in complete transparency, we've got some work to do still in the way that we're tracking our, pra our progress and our effectiveness on those strategies so that we can work to sustain the most successful ones beyond the grant years um, and the work that we can do to help our graduation rates. We're going to continue to build tribal and community partnerships that result in more and better services for American Indian students, um, I, at least since I've been around, which I guess hasn't been very long. But from what I know, for the first time, we have tribal representation on our NAC committee. That is something that we've not had in the past. And so we have a member um, from from the Ponca community um, that sits in with us. We're going to continue to seek input from all partners. Uh, meeting with Steve Larvey at the American Indian Center is crucial for the work that we're going to do moving forward. He's going to continue to collaborate with us, um, especially as we continue to work with our curriculum department at CKLA uh, moving forward as well. We're going to continue to support the American Indian students who attend LPS. Uh, Joe said it best. Um, this is, you know, I know we're moving to a, a, a we're encompassing all means all within our strategic plan but uh, moving forward but that's important with the work that we do with our students as well so thank you for your time any questions that you have for us Kathy I have a couple but first when you looked at your data since you brought it up I didn't look at it with a negative like you might have because there was a similar drop in all student population during the pandemic yep and I saw them rebound actually faster and higher yeah. Than, than what the rest of the student population did. So that's a good thing, the kids who identify and, and get. The other thing is I appreciate the all means all, that anybody who wants to be a part of it is great. And we learned a little bit about using a computer for classes. So if we have a class, a, a focused class at a high school that maybe only has two kids, is there an opportunity that we could make that a remote opportunity to interact with students in other schools simultaneously just a question that's a good question um, something that I would obviously work with dr. Larson moving forward and what that might look like um, for our for our district but something we could entertain I just figured we did remote learning for almost a whole year for high school <laughs> so we could probably do one class with maybe three kids getting Make together. shiver a little bit even if it's, <laughs> even if it's more about them interacting one of the things I've noticed with children who get together from all of the schools a lot of barriers go away it's yeah. it's not just my turf and their turf it's our turf and the whole city is our turf i'm really impressed with this i like that you put a focus on it and i like that you brought i have a whole list of notes i won't ask them all today but remind me the because i've wrote four numbers down what is the number of students that we have that are na native students or, or identified native uh, there are over 1,200 students okay, I did whose write it down. tribal communities. So that, that's awesome. From so 80 I, different uh, native nations. So there's 80 different native languages out there. In 1995, the kids didn't talk about it. And there was a, at Northeast High, where my students went to school, they had a cultural fair. And we actually had a large contingency of natives from around the city come and put on a performance at, at our very old auditorium at that time. So. I think it was 94, 93, somewhere in there. So I like that you're doing this focus of bringing the kids in, and maybe we need a big district-wide cultural fair. Thank you. Yeah. Barb? <coughs> First of all, thank you for a very good report, and more importantly, very good work. Um, in my time on the school board, I, I've seen our supports and services increase through the pursuit of grants and and that's really good um have we ever looked into native language preservation grants i don't know if we've looked specifically at grants i know and joe can talk a little bit more about this because we've had conversations with steve um, about what that looks like um, in, in terms of the language right and joe talked about working with our curriculum department to ensure that that language is appropriate within our curriculum but we've also had conversations about what that might look like with investing in the work with our elders in the community um, to, to help with some of those pieces and speaking the languages um, there's just such a variety uh, with the 80 different ones that that make it difficult to to zero in but we, we are already having conversations about that and what that might look like for next steps. I don't know if you have anything else to add to that. Yeah, the, just the complexity of the uh, diverse languages that uh, originated on this continent adds to the um, 
importance of saving these languages because where else on, on this earth are they uh, being studied or preserved? You know, we can all think of the nations where uh, possibly our ancestors came from and the languages that they brought with them. Are those languages still being taught in those places where our ancestors came from? The answer is probably yes. But here, I don't know if we can say that. So it's, it's critical to spend energy on native languages. One of the activities we're going to highly encourage our success coaches uh, to work on with our students in the clubs, every secondary, middle school, and high school club, is to learn how to introduce yourself in your language, which is something that I need to do myself, actually. So, uh, you know, as an uh, urban Indian uh, that did not grow up on a reservation, nor did I have uh, my father with me as I was growing up, you know, I, I depended upon public education to teach me about my culture. And it, what I learned uh, was the stereotypical stuff that folks learn, how Indians are extinct and exotic and other and not around anymore. So uh, we're working hard on that. And it's a complex, very important, it's, our languages are in crisis and we need to do something, yes. And the federal government and others have, uh, there's a quite a uh, treasure trove of, of language uh, grants that focus on language and preservation. I, I would assume that would need to be a partnership project with a different tribal uh, councils. Um, Mrs. Danning's suggestion of distance learning would be really good with the language component. Um, when one of the things uh, have you encountered a lot of family instability due to uh, families facing a lot of housing and employment discrimination and if you do how do you handle that our our advocates they're on the front lines there they're the individuals in the schools talking to, with our kids on a daily basis, uh, trying to mitigate the, uh, some of the situations that our fi families find themselves in and still uh, improve the student's ability to get to school. And then once they get to school, uh, what, what can we do once they're there? Uh, some of them, yeah. Uh, you know, we work with, McKinney Bento. Yeah, so and we have our homeless in McKinney Bento, I was going to say, and the supports that we have. So our advocates work really closely with Efrain Jimenez, who is our coordinator for homeless in McKinney Bento. And so any type of situation, we run through him. So um, I, I couldn't speak specifically to uh, the, the targeted population, but when the supports are needed, we have those supports in place and people can reach out to us and we can get them connect, connected with the community resources that are out there. If I could suggest, we have one of those golden opportunities coming from the city. The Lincoln um, Commission on Human Rights is sponsoring its annual Human Rights Conference. And this year's uh, keynote speaker is Joy Harjo. Um, uh, I, w I will not make the mistake of attributing which nation she belongs to because I just floated in my head that it, it, it may be too different. But she is the, our nation's uh, poet laureate. Uh, I think she's on her second term in that role. Uh, and that's um, May 1st. And um, the uh, commission offers uh, 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 scholarships uh, uh, to be able to go and attend to any low income or uh, uh, minority students or staff or others in the community that may uh, have difficulty going and paying the uh, uh, fee for registration. Uh, I would be happy to send this information to you and I would encourage that perhaps your staff and some of your students and your family members or uh, members on the advisory board attend 
Um, I have seen Jo Harjo uh, speak before. She's a, a remarkable person and um, has great insight. Uh, but the other thing that's really good about that is this going and connecting with those services that the Commission on Human Rights can do um, regarding housing discrimination, employment discrimination. They uh, can do many things, and the Commission itself can go and uh, rectify some of the wrongs that have been done. So it would be really good if that connection could be made. Sure, that'd be great. If you'd send me the information, I'd be happy to disseminate it. Okay, um, and we talked about graduation. I know that on-time graduation is a continuing concern, and uh, um, uh, I look forward to any insights you might have on being able to improve that. Um, and then my final um, questions were, I know that often, um, uh, uh, health care access and health issues can uh, be a huge problem for our Native families uh, and uh, that's oftentimes accessing Indian health care can be a challenge. How do you handle that? Yeah, again, our, our student advocates, our liaisons work with them, um, however you want to call their, their role they really work one-on-one -on -one with the families, and so they're able to connect them to those resources that are needed. Um, whenever a family calls, I mean, our team gets together and, and it, it becomes one. I mean, um, our counselor is amazing, Susan Townsend. She works a lot with our families, so the moment that we have some concerns like that, um, we, we reach out and, and get the support that we need. We also, um, not direct towards health, but there are supplies that we gather throughout the summer um, and we create a backpack for families to take home with some needs and some basic needs and, and, and health supplies and those things. So um, we try to be proactive with some of those things um, throughout the summer. Um, the pallets will come in. We were just talking about storage um, and so and where those will go. So, so we do some of those things, but um, I, the, the number one thing that I would say is reach out to our department. We're here to help. We're here to connect people to, to, the, to the supports that they need within the community. Um, and if we can't find the answer, we're going to partner with others. Um, our partnership with Steve over at the Indian Center has been fantastic. Um, and I've got nothing but good things to say in the work that we're doing together with him. And so we, we will find or at least connect um, the individuals with, with what they need. And our upcoming Morningstar training is a panel of different support services for American Indian families in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. And the social workers and counselors will be attending that, th that that will be attending this training will receive a lot of this imp community information in order to help families with their uh, health needs. Well, I, you do excellent work. I have actually been recently contacted by a Native family that is moving from Chicago to Lincoln, specifically to work with you guys. <laughs> Good. Wow. Yes, yeah, so you have Send a great, them away. Yeah, I already have. Okay. Uh, uh, you have a great reputation and you're starting to attract uh, Native families um, who, who want um, better supports than they have found in other urban environments. So continue to do your good work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Annie? Bob, well, what did I for? Oh, We're done. That's okay. Um, just kind of points of clarification. First of all, thank you very much. You both did an excellent job of breaking the barrier and talking to the panel, to the board here. So thank you for doing that. Um, I see that in the write-up that the grant that we get, the amount of money we get, is not, says it's not based on the number, only on the base of students. But if we said, um, says is that true it's not what sorry it's a bit it's not based only on the number of students per program it's also on the total amount of Indian education funds available at the federal level is that correct sure so obviously that so our number plays into the formula uh, of students but there is I mean it depends right there's the other variables of the money amount of money per form every year correct correct 
So did I hear you correct that we have a thousand, like twelve hundred identified students? Or families? So. Students. students, students, but ones with so it's important to understand that it's the ones that count with the ED 506 on file that count towards the formula of this grant. So while we may have over a thousand students, the, one, students by the ones that qualify us for the federal money come from our ED 506 on file, and those we have 713. Okay, fantastic. I mean, nonetheless, you're doing a great job and great work there. Um, I assume that part of like going forward, it's continuing to be, um, if we can get that number up, we can possibly get more money, obviously. That's and absolutely. so more money means, I mean, just even four years ago, five years ago, we didn't have the American, the, uh, the uh, Eagle Feather program, which I think is fantastic. And it's one of the, during graduation, it always brings me a great pleasure when I see a student, they're very proud when they go across with that feather and so that's fantastic so anything else we can add to that is great so thank you for your work and um, you know whatever we can do to help you to raise the numbers would be great great thank you okay. Don, did you? Uh, when we talk about district-wide graduation rates uh, bodies like the legislature tend to be very focused on on-time graduation uh, and it makes sense to me that uh, that's the metric but I also know that we have a uh, number of success stories uh, in students who take longer than four years to graduate. You showed us the on-time graduation rates, which I appreciate, and I don't need them tonight, but I'm wondering if you have numbers for the uh, students that take longer than uh, four years. Um, yeah, we can work with our department to get those numbers if you need them. I, I would appreciate that. Yeah, we can do that now. If you might just send them to me and I'll get them out to the whole board. Sure. That would be great, thanks. Yeah. Any, any other yeah. discussion? Someday yeah. it would be nice if graduation just meant graduation, not <laughs> how long it took you to get there. Amen. <laughs> That's, that's past us. I know that. <laughs> I know. Past us, us too. too. Yeah. And, and I, for one, I'm glad you put the data on there because I think that's what holds us accountable. Yeah. So thanks for your presentation.